Hi everyone, it's Jeanette from Jewelry by Jeanette and today I would like to show you how to make this adorable and very simple adjustable ankle bracelet. It has a sliding knot which is actually much easier than it looks. For today's project we will be using the July kit that I call down by the sea and I call it down by the sea because the colors and the charms just remind me of the sea a beautiful day at the beach so in the kit you will receive everything that you need to make the ankle bracelet and it doesn't have to be an ankle bracelet you could make a regular adjustable bracelet for your wrist if you like the materials will allow you to make a bracelet up to 10 inches. So it should accommodate most ankle sizes. You will receive in the kit four crystal rondelles, which I will hold up so you can see how beautiful they are. They really do sparkle quite a lot you will receive four check glass rondelles as well. Two of them will be an aqua blue and two of them will be an iridescent light sea green, sea foam green. You will also receive a charm. You will have a choice of either the dolphin charm, he's so cute, or the sea turtle charm. I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. So you will actually be receiving, oh no, I had it right the first time. <laughs> I did have it right. Included in the kit is also a longer piece of faux leather. It's one millimeter. You can use other one millimeter cord. You could use genuine leather if you like, but I've, I'm including the faux leather for you. You can also wear this in the water and uh, at the beach and you shouldn't have any problems. One other supply that you will need that I'm including is this small noodle bead. You might have seen these before. We're going to use this to make the adjustable sliding knot. You'll see that in a little while. The only tools that you will need to complete this project are a pair of scissors and maybe a dot of glue that I'll show you how to apply really carefully. I'm using GS Hypo Cement, but you can use super glue. You can use even maybe a drop of Loctite glue. Anything like that would work. Maybe even a little bit of white glue, like Elmer's glue would work as well. Um, E6000, but you want to be really sparing with your glue because if you put too much this sliding knot will not slide but we'll get back to that in a little while when you take out your faux leather you will notice that there will be two pieces one will be a longer piece and that will be 20 inches now, mine is not 20 inches because I am making a smaller ankle bracelet. You probably won't need all 20 inches, but I'm gonna give you enough, as I said, for a 10 inch ankle bracelet. And then you will also have a 10 inch piece of cord. This will be setting aside for now because we will need this for the sliding knot at the end. 
So the first thing you want to do is measure your ankle. And I like my ankle bracelets to be just a little bit on the loose side. I don't like them super tight. And I would recommend that you also not measure your ankle super tight because remember this is going to be adjustable so you could make it a little tighter if you need to it's better to start out a little bit looser so i have measured this out to be the size of my ankle times two so you want to double the size of your ankle I want to find the middle of my cord, the center point, which is right here. And I'm going to try to mark that with my fingernail or just keep my finger near it. It does not have to be exact, but you want it to be pretty close. And I'm just tying a regular, simple overhand knot. just like that. And then I'm going to thread on my beads. Now, what you want to do is make sure that when you're threading them on, you are threading them onto the longer part of your cord because you've already made the knot and now this is the shorter part. So you do that once again. All right, so I am starting here. I'm going to follow the same pattern as my sample. You can certainly switch it up. You can leave beads out. You can add other beads that you have, but I'm just following the same pattern. So I'm taking one aqua bead, and two of the crystal rondelles. So far we have this. Now I'm going to add my charm. For this bracelet, I'm using the dolphin and I'm just going to thread the jump ring onto the cord. All right. Just need the jump ring. I don't need the hole that's at the top of the dolphin. There we are. And now I'm going to add two more of the crystal rondelles. And finally, the last aqua bead. And now, this is what you should have if you're following the same pattern. Now what we need to do is make another knot right on the side where the last aqua bead is. And we're going to get that knot as close as we can to that bead. It does not have to be super, super tight. I'm just tying a regular knot I'm keeping my finger right over here next to the bead so that I can get the knot fairly close. And that turned out pretty well. And I just tighten that knot. Now you don't want to pull with all the strength that you have because you don't want to snap the cord. If you're using real leather cord, it's actually more delicate than the faux leather. So be really careful with that. And there we are. That is the main part of our ankle bracelet. Now it's time to make the sliding knot. I like to add a couple of beads, one bead on each side usually, to the ends of my cord that the sliding knot are attached to. I like to add them before I make the sliding knot 
but you could certainly add them afterwards. I, I like adding them before. Um, this way, it's not as fussy or fiddly. So it's very simple to do that. I'm just going to take one of the iridescent seafoam green. Actually, it's more like a mint green, I would say. I'm threading that on one end. And then I'm going to tie, again, a really simple overhand knot, just like you were going to tie your shoes. And I'm gonna to try to keep that knot pretty close. I would say maybe half an inch from the end of the cord. That's so that we don't take up too much space on the cord. We're going to need that so that our bracelet will slip over our foot. You'll see that this will stay at the end later on. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm threading on the other green bead, tying another simple overhand knot and pushing it up to about half an inch. Now, if you want to be very particular and very precise, after you're finished, you can go back and trim off the ends so that they are perfectly even. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna show you how to make the sliding knot. <clears throat> so the first thing that we want to do is cross these two cords over one another, but we don't want them to overlap. So they should look something like train tracks. So they're gently going to cross one another. And if you have put these beads on ahead of time, I'm gonna move this tray out of the way. If you have put these beads on ahead of time, make sure that you're keeping them at the end at the ends of the cord, right? So I am crossing one over the other here. One should be on top and one should be on the bottom. I'm going to take my 10 inch piece of cord here and I'm going to find pretty much the middle of it. Again, it does not have to be really exact. What's important though is you see how these two cords crossed over each other. We don't want that to happen. So I usually lay it out like this. I'm going to take the noodle bead and I'm going to lay the noodle bead on top and I'm gonna hold this up so you can see what I'm doing. The noodle bead should be on top of the two cords. I like to put it somewhere in between there, right? Now, don't worry if this is not perfectly even, it's, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to put it underneath the others. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it like this. So you see now I have three cords and I'm going to wrap this around this noodle bead. So you'll see keeping the other two cords where they are. I'm going to wrap once, twice, and I'm going to wrap it three times. And you'll notice that I am wrapping towards my thumb. I'm going to hold this up 
you want to make sure that when you're wrapping, you don't cross the cord over itself. You don't cross those wraps. So I hope you can see that I have three wraps and they are not crisscrossing each other. Now I'm going to hold on to these wraps with this hand and I'm going to take this long tail and I'm going to put it through the opening in the noodle bead and I'm not sure why this isn't fitting. I think I might need to clip the end. So if this happens to you, it's actually good that this happened because if this happens to you, you may need to cut the end of this cord into a point. So I'm gonna try to do that without letting go of my knots. If you have to put it down, then you can always re rewind this video and go back to where you were. All right, that should do it. I'm gonna see if that helps put it through the little noodle bead. There it goes, I think. Hmm. Well, there we go, come on. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to include a bigger noodle bead for you. Um, but I don't really need the noodle bead. I'll show you why. I'm going to slip that out and you'll see that there's sort of like a little tunnel that we have left. So now we'll make the sliding knot closure. And what we're going to do is take our 10 inch piece of cording, our little noodle bead, and we're going to lay our cords over one another like this. You wanna make sure that your beads, if you've already put them on, are at the ends. <clears throat> so you'll see that I'm gonna hold these cords this way. They should be parallel and not crisscrossing. It doesn't matter if they are evenly spaced, it doesn't matter if anything is set, if everything is centered, don't worry about that right now. We're just going to hold these cords together next to each other, nice and flat. We're going to take our noodle bead and we're going to put it on top of these two cords. somewhere near the middle. You could put it in between them if you like. It doesn't, it's not really important where. And we're going to take our 10 inch piece of cord and we're going to put it underneath and we're going to hold on to this. And what we're going to do now, let me get the scissors out of the way, is make three wraps and they're going to go in the direction towards my thumb. So it's coming from underneath the cords. We wrap around once. I'm gonna grab it with this finger here. We wrap it a second time, not crossing over. And we wrap it a third time. I like to do three. I'm going to show you where this is right now. You want to make sure that you are holding on to everything. Don't let it go. Go very slowly with this. We're, we're not in a race and you have to be very patient. If you take your time and you're patient, this should be a very easy thing to do. So I've got my three wraps. You'll notice they're not crossing over. I'm going to hold on to them with my other hand 
hold those wraps in place. And I'm taking the longer side that's coming from underneath and I am feeding it through the hole in the noodle bead. And the hole will be large enough to accommodate the included cord. And I'm going to keep sliding that cord. You see it's come out the other side of the noodle bead. Now I'm going to carefully, we're still holding on to those wraps. I'm going to carefully just slide that noodle bead off. Slide it off the cord. And I'm going to gently pull this cord, the long end, get my thumb out of the way. And here's where you have to exercise some patience because you're going to pull one end and the other end, give and take, push and pull a little bit, and you're gonna keep your fingers on those wraps. And you're going to gently pull each side, always holding those wraps. You're gonna snug it up, keep everything even, can you see that they're still even, right? I haven't crisscrossed them. I'm pulling them gently. Take your time with it. I'm not rushing. And you don't want to pull it super, super tight. You want to make sure that when you pull on these two ends with the beads, that you see how they slide? That's what we want. We want them to slide. Now what we want to do is we need to trim these two ends, not the two with the beads. We want to trim the two ends of the cord that we use to tie the knot. What I like to do, because I have been known to cut the wrong ends, and then of course you have to start all over, usually. What I like to do is I like to hold the two ends that I'm not cutting in one hand like this. And then I have these two that I am cutting. There we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these ends off I like to leave maybe mm, an eighth of an inch of cord on the knot. Some people cut it right up against where the knot is. I'm always afraid that I will cut part of the knot. So I leave maybe like I said an eighth of an inch. I'll show you just like that. And that will not, it should not bother you. I'm going to cut the other end now. I have to bring it a little closer so I can see it. And there we are. Again, if you want to get them precise and measure them, you certainly can. I'm not going to worry about that. So now you will see that when you pull the sliding knot, You pull the ends, it gets smaller, and then we can loosen it and make it bigger. And I think you can also see that when you pull it all the way out, this should fit around your foot. And we snug it up this way. Now, if you like, if it makes you more comfortable, you can add a drop of glue to both of the knots on the ends of the cord. And if you want to, you can also add a little drop of glue 
on the knot itself, I would not put any glue inside the knot because you run the risk of gluing the sliding part. And then of course it won't slide. I like the GS Hypo Cement because it's got a little needle nose tip and it allows for precise application. And it also keeps the glue from oozing out and the tip from drying out. So here it is, our adorable ankle bracelet. I will have a list of supplies, including a link to my Etsy shop or information on my Etsy shop where you can purchase this really affordable kit. It's only $6. So um, totally worth it, I think. You can use your own beads, of course, if you like. And I just wanted to show you two other ankle bracelets that I have available in my Etsy shop as well. They're a different design. These are not, these do not have sliding knots, so they're really not adjustable. But I do take custom orders if you would like a specific size. This finished ankle bracelet will also be in my Etsy shop if you prefer to purchase an already made bracelet. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed the project. It's really easy to make this. It might take you, you know, it might take a little practice like anything else. That sliding knot might take a little bit of practice, but again, just take your time and do it slowly. I'll tell you, the very first time I made the sliding knot, I got it right. And I was a beginner. I didn't really know anything about macrame knots or sliding knots. So it really is not a difficult thing to do. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks so much again and enjoy your summer. Bye now.